Ukrainian armed forces have liberated more than half of the territories that Russia occupied since February 24th. It is about 78,000 square kilometers. But almost 2,000 Ukrainian cities and villages remain under the occupation of the Russian army in ruin and poverty. In Melitopol, Zaporizhia region, the Russian occupiers have tightened filtration measures, the mayor said. Citizens are having their mobile phones and cars checked, and then they are being thrown into basements. And from January the first 2023, occupiers plan to ban the circulation of the hryvnia. Melitopol residents who are on the verge of survival due to the occupation are forced to exchange hryvnia for rubles at an extremely unfavorable rate. They are trying to drive our people into poverty. Now I am talking about the situation they are doing with Hryvnia. Since January 1st, the Russian occupiers have announced that any person who has Hryvnias is a traitor. This is a traitor to the motherland and any kind of terror violence can be applied to him or her, ranging from the fact that they will be taken prisoner or carry out explanatory work and ending with that they will be deported or in Activity. We all clearly understand what kind of torture they do to our people. The standard of living, prosperity and solvency of citizens in all the occupied territories is declining. The left bank of the Kherson region is not an exception. Naturally, the standard of living fell sharply. Why did it fall? Because those types of activities that people were mainly engaged in before have disappeared. Agriculture, which was the basis of the left bank activity, what happened to it? The Russian authorities partly confiscated it, confiscated the harvest, winter crops and partly forced them to sell it to them at reduced prices. And while the incomes of many people are declining and some have even lost their jobs, the Russians are raising prices. Supplies to the left bank of the Kherson region are completely controlled by the occupiers, and therefore even essential goods are often beyond the reach of residents of the region. The supply comes from Russia and Crimea. It is clear that the right bank is closed where a lot of products came from. Meat costs 400 hryvnias per 1 kilogram. I know that the prices for building materials are very high. The same cement 200 hryvnias per bag. A bag of beauty 400 hryvnias. The prices are very high in our perception. They are simply sky-high prices. Such economic realities have been created the, that people are forced to buy at such prices. Oleksandr Yakovlev, mayor of Skadovsk, in a comment to the project News of the Sea of Azov. This video shows Mariupol. Before capturing the city, the Russian army destroyed about 90% of the living area. But despite this, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians remain in the city. Once a week, local residents line up to get a bowl of free porridge. The humanitarian situation in Mariupol is catastrophic. People simply freeze in their own apartments without windows, heat, electricity and water supply. In the last months alone, the death rate has increased twice, and today we can say that the death rate in the city of Mariupol is eight times higher than in the pre-war, the most difficult COVID period. And unfortunately, it continues to grow, and it is clear for what reasons, because indeed the cold, the inhuman conditions in which people continue to live, the lack of central heating, the lack of a chance for at least some kind of heating globally, it leads to a an increase in colds. In addition, a clear flu epidemic is spreading in the city and accordingly with the collapse of the medical system, there is an increase in mortality. Petro Andrushenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. Immediately after the occupation of Mariupol, Russian officials promised to rebuild the city. Kremlin propagandists began to spread information about alleged reconstruction of residential buildings, bridges and roads. The Russian Ministry of Construction, Housing and Utilities named the project for the reconstruction of the destroyed city a master plan for a development of Mariupol until 2035. But instead of the promised benefits, the Russian occupiers brought only death, destruction and poverty to Mariupol. Reported by Roman Smoller, Valeria Nikipelova, UATV News.